<laughs> Why not a second one? But that begs the question. Why would a historian of late medieval and early modern era, 1400 to 1700, do something like this? It's crazy. I'm not supposed to do so. <laughs> historians, really serious historians, are not supposed to write about this. We're not supposed to write books about this. And I felt compelled to do it. Not just as a person, and not just as a human, but as a historian. To help set the record straight. <coughs> because from those questions about what did it feel like not to write on a donkey, to the present, from that time to the present, I continually run into the mist shaken history of what happened in Cuba. And there's nothing like a first person account that can I stumbled onto that just out of sheer desperation. I have a colleague at Yale, Miroslav Volk, theologian, Croatian, who actually spent time in, in, in prison simply for being a Christian. And it's all about forgiveness. Is also uh, written on uh, not just forgiving, but bearing witness. And something he said to me once, which I then read in his book, made me realize why it was right for me to write Waiting for Snow and Man in the book. He said, You know, when, when someone is an eyewitness to history, and that history involves some great injustice, and you don't bear witness to that injustice, then you're allowing evil to triumph. Not only at the event, but forever. Eli Wiesel has, has said more or less the same thing. You have to set the record straight. And if you don't set it straight, you are an accomplice. In my case, I went crazy. No other way of explaining. And, and the catalyst for me what drove me insane in 1999 was Elian Gonzalez. Now, is there anyone in this room who never heard of Elian Gonzalez? <laughs> I doubt it. No matter how young you are, especially if you were living in Miami at the time. That boy drove me insane because there uh, came for me the full horror of the distortion of Cuban history and the lack of understanding about the Cuban situation in the U.S. Um, I thought I would try to set the record straight by sending letters to every major newspaper, magazine, and television uh, news station in the U.S. I wrote letters on my super fancy Yale stationery, mighty monk professor of this and that. Please, please, I said in my letter, put your stories on Elian in context. This is a government that intentionally and willfully separated tens of thousands of families and has never, ever cared about children being reunited with their parents. Please, cover the Pedro Panera. Please, even more important, cover the way that during the freedom flight from 66 on, it became nearly impossible for any Cuban family to leave intact. How the fathers were sent to do slave labor in agricultural camps. Talk about the thousands, thousands of fathers sent to prison who never saw their kids, or the ones killed, tortured. Well, I didn't get a single acknowledgement in any of my letters. Not one. So then I thought, maybe humor is the way to go. <laughs> so I wrote a piece, I thought, you know, maybe the New Yorker will pick it up, or some other Esquire magazine, maybe humor is the way to go, uh, to deflect attention from this terribly misshapen alien in the dark. Oh, the boy needs to be with his father. Yeah, yeah, P.S. Couldn't care less, they couldn't care less about the point I'm trying to get across. So, I was already crazy, so I wrote a 12-page essay in which I proved conclusively that Monica Lewinsky was an agent of Fidel Castro. <laughs> 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 I don't have to mention the evidence.
evidence. <laughs> that didn't get, didn't get me anywhere. So then I thought, well, if I tell the story of what happened to me and pass it off as fiction, if I write a novel about my experience, maybe the American public will, will start to get the point. That's what I did. I went crazy. But over one summer, I wrote Waiting for Stone in a band, working at night. 10 p.m. or 2 or 3 a.m. every day, teaching in the morning, summer school. I was insane. I was only working on two, three hours of sleep. <laughs> but it worked. I sold the book two weeks after I finished it. First draft. Didn't change a word. I had no outline. When I go to high school to speak, the teachers want to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> You've ruined all the years we've had. <laughs> I'm going to make outlines and, and, and proofread their drafts. I was crazy, that's what you do. <laughs> crazy, crazy with rage. Absolute burning rage. That's the way in which history was being pushed and the way in which many, many things were being ignored, including the name of the individual involved. CNN was the worst.